Hi everybody, and welcome to this student-produced Reading Through History knockoff video in the story of Pope's Rebellion, otherwise known as the Pueblo Revolt. This project was produced by Ethan Fung, Christian Liao, and myself, Lucas Levy. We are juniors at San Marino High School enrolled in Mr. Riccone's 2020-2021 AP US History course. In a nutshell, the Pueblo Revolt refers to an uprising of multiple southwestern tribes, aka the Pueblo, against their Spanish colonizers in 1680, 140 years after the arrival of the Spanish. But before describing these tumultuous times in detail, some background. When the Spanish first arrived on Pueblo land around the 1540s, Spanish missionaries attempted to dominate Pueblo life and force their conversion to Christianity. However, when the Pueblos resisted, their kivas, the traditional ceremonial pits of the Pueblo, and something similar to what we all today would view as a church, were burned by the Spanish with mass and other sacred objects also destroyed. Many also suffered greatly from the encomienda system, a structure that subjected the natives to long work hours and harsh living conditions. They were tried in Spanish courts and received severe punishments when convicted. Hanging, whipping, dismemberment of the hands and feet, or condemnation to slavery were common methods that the Spanish used to beat the natives into submission. In the years leading up to the Pueblo Revolt, grudges against the Spanish had been mounting. Many Pueblos were whipped and hanged for their purported use of sorcery and neglect of Christianity. It was then, in the year before 1680, that a native by the name of Pope, one of the Pueblo convicted sorcerers, was able to capitalize on these accumulated sentiments by putting a plan into place to revolt against the Spanish government. To start, he meticulously organized and formed alliances with other neighboring tribes. Each tribe had sought the independence, prosperity, and good health, which Pope had promised in return for their support. Despite speaking different languages, the tribes were able to successfully communicate with each other and execute their plan. What made Pope and his army so successful were knotted cords, an innovative tool he had given to every tribe. Pope had deliberately instructed for the cords to be knotted the same number of knots and told the neighboring tribe leaders to untie one segment per day until there were none remaining. On the day that the last knot had been untied, the Pueblo would attack the Spanish and overtake Santa Fe. And thus, in 1680, the Pueblo were able to successfully rid the Spanish with a total force of 8,000 Pueblo Indians from the area we have come to know as Santa Fe, New Mexico. The remaining Spanish who had survived fled from the area and many casualties had been claimed on both sides. At the expense of the many sacrificed, the Pueblo had claimed the Midwest and Santa Fe for themselves once again. After their successful uprising, the Pueblo immediately moved to undo countless years of Spanish influence. Spanish documents and historical records were destroyed, churches were burned, and Christian marriages were nullified. Santa Fe was claimed as the newly founded territory's capital, and the Pueblo natives were free to practice their ancient traditions and customs. However, this didn't last long. Twelve years later, the Pueblo people were once again subjects of the Spanish Empire. Despite the recapturing of Santa Fe, the Pueblo Revolt had a number of all-important short- and long-term effects. The Spanish catered more to the living conditions of the Native Americans and permitted larger crop yields. Nevertheless, to prevent such a revolt of Spanish rule to happen again, they installed missions across the region in order to pacify the Native Americans and change their way of life. In terms of religion, the Native Americans practiced in secret, afraid that their beliefs would warrant punishment by their Spanish colonizers. However, as time progressed and living conditions grew worse, desperation caused the Pueblo people to convert to Christianity in search of sustenance and protection. Yet, the past carries on until today as Native Americans continue to suffer poor treatment by the government, especially in the pinnacle search for racial equality and activism found in 2020. This broader movement has spread to the descendants of the Pueblo as well. An article by the New York Times explains how many of the newer generations are exploring their own past that is uniquely relevant as the country is riven by questions over historic racial injustice. Even today, groups are still being neglected. Especially in the wake of the pandemic, delays in financial aid towards Pueblo tribes are some of the deadliest phases of the present pandemic, indicating overall neglect in financial treatment towards Native Americans and minority ethnic groups. The Pueblo Revolt continues to stand out as a rare success in history revolts and has left an imprint on Spanish colonization in the region. 
As a result, many of the Native American tribes in New Mexico were able to keep their land and culture, unlike other groups who were removed from their homelands as superpowers pursued territorial expansion. In spite of the tumultuous Pueblo history, the revolt's biggest legacy is that it allowed people to remain in their homelands and maintain sovereignty, language, and culture. Thank you for watching the student-produced Reading Through History knockoff video.